Welcome to Transparency with Zeb King. Our show is a show where we interview local leaders and uh, change makers in the community. Uh, today we have uh, the honor of having um, Paul Sam on our show. Uh, Paul is a counselor, elected counselor with the First Nation, uh, Sartlip First Nation, which is uh, near the village of, Alert, of, of Brentwood Bay. Uh, welcome to the show, Paul. Thank you. And uh, yeah, it's really a, an honor to have you here. I've known you for some years now. That's right. And uh, I, 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 I listed off at least one of the hats that you wear, but I know there are many others that you have as well. Um, and I, I don't even know if I could list them all, but maybe through our conversation, mm -hmm. some of those will come up. Sure. Um, and uh, so you're, you're a, uh, a counselor for um, Sartlip First Nation, yeah. uh, and you've been doing that uh, about how long? Oh, it's got to be 30 some odd 30 years. 30 some years. Oh yeah, That's it has to be. Wow. Probably 38 years, 40, going on 40 years. Is that all straight from the... the no, I took no. a break in between, okay. I, you, know, you know, because I would just, um, you know, I just needed a break in there, you know. Sure. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, is it with Sartlip? I, I'm not sure. Is it an election every two years, or yeah, does it every change two now? Years. No, okay. it's every two years. We're working on a custom election code. So right. What's that mean? Next year. It means it's we'll be able to uh, have our own, uh, you know, uh, bylaws and regulations around you know who we elect the terms. Um, you uh, know. And that's not the case right now. No, it's, it's no, it's still under the uh, Indian Act. Oh, okay. They set it, yeah. and they do. They also set how many people can be on council, or do well, it says in there that you you have uh, one hundred people, and you have one councillor. Oh yeah, per hundred. So. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. and how many uh, council members are there? Sorry, well, it? right now there's ten of us. Ten of you, eh? So uh, yeah, because we're. We're around 1,100 strong right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. And growing. That's on uh, reserve and off, eh? Yeah, or, that's yeah. right, yeah. And, yeah. Um, uh, and it's just like, uh, I, to some degree, um, like municipal council, in that you meet every week, right? Pretty much. Two weeks. Every, every, every two, two weeks? weeks we okay. Meet, yeah. Right, and uh, yeah. Always uh, a lot of complex issues to uh, work oh, with. Oh, yeah. With, well, with you being on municipal yeah. council, you know what it's like to, you know, dealing with the the issues of well, family needs and mm -hmm. municipal needs and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and from time to time we do get to meet together we do uh, and th those are always really good meetings and there's um, not many pro our first nations in the province that do that that's true yeah yeah, yeah. so it's good and uh, and and we have a unique relationship in central Saanich yeah. where the municipality uh, in includes the voting populations on Sartlip and Sayout mm -hmm. um, uh, so anybody living on Sartlip and Sayout First Nation vote and can run in the municipal election. Exactly. So it's a, uh, in some ways a really good, I think, a good uh, relationship uh, with yes. lots more room for improvement. Oh, yeah. Course, but yeah. And it's also unique that, uh, you know, that we can vote in, in, in the municipal election yeah. in the province. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm really appreciative of that. So uh, what I was wondering about to begin with was... Um, I know I, I introduced you as Paul Sam, uh, but uh, you have a, a is it Sinchapan name? Yes. Well? Yeah, what is that? Telachten. Telachten. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was my my great grandfather's father's name, and it was wow. handed down in our family's structure. We we hand down names as you know as as we we go through our lives, mm. and some you know we we inherit them, and some are handed down. You know, from family to family, generation to generation. Right. Yeah. And so for viewers, when you say we do that, this is um, people in uh, just Sartlip or Sartlip, Seya, Pakichan, everywhere. In That's right. In, in the First Nations yeah. territories. They, right. Yeah. They, they all carry a, uh, a, you know, a traditional name. Right. Yeah. And, and um, so you were, you were very close to... Um, elders in the community do you were you where did you learn the, I, you know these sorts of ways and, and traditions and language oh, and I, at the time I didn't know it mm. but I, you know I was raised by my grand grandparents even though my parents were right next door oh. I lived with my grandparents to, to, to look after my grandmother because she was nearly blind 
Oh. So we helped her around the house, you know, I got her firewood or water, you know. You were one of a number of siblings? Uh, a number of well, kids, yeah, yeah, at the time there was nine of us. Nine of you, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and yeah, I, I was taught very young. Hmm. My grandparents, great-grandparents, they didn't speak English. Interesting. Yeah, yeah they, they didn't know English. And, wow. And so I was also their interpreter, you know, when, when, when they needed one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I learned that, that I spoke uh, uh, Hokaminam, which is Cowichan language, oh. and Sinchatan, which is Saanich. I, oh. I, yeah, because my great-grandmother was from Cowichan, and okay. my great-grandfather was from here. So I, I know, I think, is it H-O-I-L? Uh, Etla H-O-I-L. Etla H-O-I-L. Yeah, that means, you know, how are you? How are you? Yeah. Is that Sinchatan or Halkaminam? It's uh, Sinchatan. Sinchatan. Each oil is Halkaminam. Each oil is Halkaminam. Mm -hmm. It's similar but somewhat yeah. different. Yeah. yeah. And there are there there's a lot of phrases and words that are similar. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it is. It, it's uh, in our language structure. We've spoken mainly Halkaminam. Huh. Uh, in, yeah. And but that's changing. It's, okay. It's, yeah. Is so more effort or, or more work is being done to, to to speak more Sanchatan and, and mm -hmm. or something? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, it, it it's evolving. You know, from uh, you know a mixed dialect, and we have now uh, structure and uh, curriculum and, and uh, oh. programs in in that University of Victoria, mm -hmm. uh, Hosanna School Board, are jointly uh, managing a, a language program. When you just said. Hosanich School Board, is, that's the territory as well, is it? Hosanich, it covers, uh, if, if you look at, um, well, if you go to Pachals, what we call Pachals, oh. Mount Doug, okay. and if you look right. north, right. it covers the whole peninsula, right, including Malat. Okay. And then, you know, Malat, and then there's four tribes on, on the peninsula, mm -hmm. and then Malat, so that's Hosanich. Okay, that's very. That's where important. the word sandwich came from. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, important for all of us to learn that yeah. and maybe even practice saying it. Yeah, yeah and that's that's, that's important that you know when you say that we learn that you know yeah. that means our neighbors. Yeah. You know, across the road from us. Right. Um, learn and, and and become educated in, in our uh, traditional uh, ways of living and learning right. and you know because uh, the you know it is. They are, like the University of Victoria, for instance, Camosun College, they're using a lot of their, uh, our elders and, you know, in their, their curriculum where they come in and mm -hmm. help teach. There so, really is an effort to try to, um, uh, would you say, revitalize the language or oh to yeah, use the language? Yeah. To, yeah. That, that language mm -hmm. uh, program at UVic is called a Certificate in Language Revitalization. Wonderful, yeah. Which I graduated with my Wonderful. youngest son from. Fantastic, yeah, yeah congratulations. In 2010. 2010, yeah, mm -hmm. and is and uh, which son is this one? Ian. Ian. So uh, is his name. Ian's there. How do I say his name? Stamachlatin. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to re rehearse these mm -hmm. over and over again to get them. That's awesome. So there's a lot of work going on, and he's carrying on some of that work. Is it correct? Yeah, he is. He's teaching in in, in the system now. Wow. And, uh, yeah, he develops the curriculum, and he helps teach. At Ubik or. Uvic and and uh, Camosun yep. and and at our own tribal school. Hmm. Yeah. So, overall, the um, the race to keep the language going, how are, how's it going with that? I mean, with people, some people who knew the language um, uh, pass away, and others are learning it. Uh, oh yeah, we, age, so. we ensure that it's you know that we are teaching, like right now. Uh, you know, the majority of the, well, all of the, the children that attend, you know, right from uh, preschool, right up to, uh, we're up to grade 10 right now at, at our tribal school. Okay. And they, they all participate in language programs. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they come out of that knowing a fair amount. They it. do. And they, they, the only thing is that we're, when they go home, the parents mm, course, yeah. can't speak. Right. So we're, we're developing a program where the parents can come and learn the language as well so they can converse with their children. Yeah. You know, I'm really proud of uh, my, one of my grandsons. 
-hmm. And there's, there's, there's others now going through the program, the St. Jonathan Immersion. Mm -hmm. And, and there, there's one that completed it. And uh, he, he speaks with his father, my son Ian. Oh, in, wow. in the language. Oh, yeah. And matter of fact, he comes home and he teaches his grandmother, my wife. Holy, that's great. That's oh, good. Yeah. Um, the, the generations oh, yeah. communicating. And that's how well it's talking. working. You know, the, the language program sign. there, they're, you know, the, all of the children. And he's only seven. No, sorry, 60, six years old. Wonderful, wonderful, yeah. yeah. And he must feel quite good, proud about well, it, I hope. Well, you know what, he's, he's, I think I was like that at his age, yeah. where I didn't know that it, you know you should feel really proud of doing, you know knowing the language and and and, uh, and, and, and what you do with it because mm. when I was growing up I didn't I didn't realize and at the time mm. how important that was going to be and how useful it is and and and, and conversing with your own elders and your parents etc yeah how important it was because I thought people in my generation all spoke it but apparently that wasn't the case. Yeah. Yeah. So and wow. yeah. So there was only a handful of us that wow. had parents and grandparents that spoke the language. Uh, brothers and sisters uh, learn it too. And they yeah. did. Yeah. They had no choice. Yeah. Because they, that's all they spoke. Yeah. You know, it was the language. So they they had no choice. They had to learn it. I didn't learn English until I got into public school. Hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. You had that opportunity. Yeah, but at the time, like I say, I didn't know that. You know that that this this was you know awesome for me and my family to for, to know the language right and the culture because language and culture they go hand in hand you can't just know the language and not know the culture and traditions at the same time so because a lot of the language was spoken in the longhouse tradition like I was saying earlier when you attend you know go into a longhouse and then they're uh, passing along traditions and culture in there you know you have to know mm. which language to use and, 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 and uh, you know exactly where you fit into that system see my name that I carry it, it entitles me to to work in, in certain ceremonies only see I can't see there are a number of different ceremonies in our culture that that we follow yeah. obey and pass on so and, and so there are other ceremonies that I can't do that other families can do, you know. So if you met someone that carried also a traditional name, you know, they would there you would know where they were from, okay. who their parents were, you know, that whole bloodline, and, and you would know what what traditional ceremony that they could, you know, uh, traditionally carry out and in our long our society. And you. You, as well as others, are busy with the Longhouse uh, yeah, ceremony now. every year, and so every it's starting winter. now, yeah. Oh, every yeah. winter. Well, yeah, no, I shouldn't say that. It, yeah. it, it, it continues throughout the year. Right, okay. But it's more busy in yeah. the winter. Yeah. And backing up, yeah. I don't know if you remember when we were prohibited from practicing yes. our, what, they, pot what you call a potlatch. Yeah. So we went underground, mm -hmm. you know, and, and practiced. Mm -hmm. And uh, did all of our ceremonies underground, and that was during the winter at night. Yeah. So and, and it just after you know that we were allowed to continue, it, it just stayed in in the winter at night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's how. Yeah. yeah. And so that's why and some people were arrested and oh, yeah. for ha having potlatches. That's and, right. So they had to hide it, and it would have been hard to mm -hmm. because uh, they're singing and drumming and. All sorts of um, stuff that goes on, but it oh, yeah. could, uh, kept it alive, eh? That's right. Yeah. Wow. And so today, it's um, many people are involved as well, and it's oh yeah, each family. Well, I shouldn't say each family. Um, the majority of the people in Kusanich, you know, involve are involved in in our traditional ceremony mm -hmm. and utilize it in our lineup system. Yeah. Yeah. And everything, this is basically where you can have a lot of governance going on, like everything from exactly. names to oh, rights yeah. to... Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and that's why, when I said earlier that, you know, when, when I introduce myself as Talatkin, if I go to Cowichan, for instance, and, they, and I say my name, Talatkin, they immediately, the elders would know which family I'm from. 
And if I am allowed to participate in certain ceremonies, they would know me that way. They would know me. They would know me as Paul Sam. Yeah. You know, in, in that long now society, I would be known as Kalacht, and that would enable me to participate. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So much to learn about that. It's very there is. There is, and, and that's why, you know, friends like you, I, I'm able to, you know, say that to you, know, because I've known you for so long, mm -hmm. I can tell you exactly what's going on. You've come and, and, and visited us in our long houses, mm -hmm. so yeah. you know what goes on in there. Yeah, but amazing. you have to be invited. Mm -hmm. Not just anybody can attend right, right. a long house ceremony. Well, I, I felt uh, very honored to be invited and to be part of that. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Because as a child, um, we, we couldn't go into a longhouse just to sit and observe. Mm -hmm. The only time we were allowed to go in there was when uh, we were participating or helping with that specific ceremony. But as soon as it was over, we had to go home. Okay. Yeah. So how did you learn? Just Well, sitting there, in, you know, in, in, you know during the ceremony, there. hearing the language, seeing how it was, you know, conducted, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and then, you know, and then each time, as we grew older, you know, the, our, our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents would sit us down and say, this is how it's done. Because you carry that name, you can do this. And then they teach you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not so much like a, a, a one day a lesson or something. It's all oh, through no, it's experience. Throughout your life. Through your life. And I'm still going through it. You know, yeah. I still have elders that come up to me and correct me. Oh, wow. When I'm speaking or when I'm assisting with ceremony, they still bring me aside and say, you know, they'll talk to me in our language and say, this is how you're supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you know, I listen. Mm -hmm. You have to, to an elder. Mm -hmm. You know, I always just respect and, and they've been here for so many years, eh? You know? And I guess you pass that on as well to others oh, when you see something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's exactly how it goes. Like, you know, when we have uh, new individuals that come in to the, our society and, and they begin to learn, you have to sit them down, not just them either, the whole family. Mm. Say, this is how it's done. So I just pass along the words that were given to me. Right. And I pass it on to them. So they can carry it on, in turn carry it on, but only if they belong to that specific ceremony. Right. Yeah. And so you, you, you do this yeah, uh, as well as you are also, uh, you work for the Red Cross? I do. And what is the title? What's the role? Well, you know, that's evolved over okay. the years. I'm now uh, in Indigenous Community Development. Okay. And basically I, I work specifically with the Aboriginal community throughout the province. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I assist in, in uh, teaching, uh, you know, like first aid. Uh, we have a program called Respect Education that uh, deals in, in violence and abuse prevention. Uh, there are a no number of different programs that are involved in that area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have uh, disaster management that we can train individuals, to, you know, in, in emergency preparedness. So there are a number of programs in there. That, and uh, we do presentations at conferences, workshops, meetings, etc. And if there's a specific program need in, 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 in one community, we would go in and introduce it. And, you know, because, uh, because I'm what you call a generalist, okay. I would go in and introduce it and go over what, what that program entails. And then I would bring in one of our other managers. Now, this could be training. like, okay, we were talking about Sartla, but this could be in any place in, in British, throughout Columbia, British Columbia, throughout British Columbia. Oh, yeah. Wow. And I do travel the province in, in offering these programs. Yeah. But I don't exactly, you know, carry out the program itself because, like I said, I, I introduce it, and I know I have enough knowledge about it to introduce it to the community. Then I bring in one of our trainers, one of our managers. And we mean First Nations communities, uh, or yeah, non First yeah, Nations yeah. as well. And uh, okay. No, no, we 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 work with non First Nations as well. Right. Oh yeah. Right. But my uh, specific area is the Aboriginal community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the indigenous community. It, uh, yeah, the the Métis, the Inuit, and okay. the First Nations. How long? Did, how, how long did you say? Or that one, that job has been going on. For? I've been doing it for ten years. Ten years in yeah. that capacity. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. And so you do a lot. You've got that that you're yeah. doing. 
for communities. You've, uh, I think you flew to, was it Fort McMurray when they were doing? When they, when they had the evacuations. Evacuations. You know, and, and the number of, you know, individuals. It wasn't just First Nations either, you know. Right. Was, the no. whole community of uh, Fort McMurray was burnt out, you know, well, 20% of it. Wow. And I went and did some frontline work, uh, interviews and et cetera, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, assisted them with uh, their needs, shelter, food, clothing, you know, yeah, transportation. That's amazing. So oh, yeah. how do you, uh, you travel all over, you have so much, how do you get downtown? What do you do for the recovering yourself? Well, you know, I always return to my, my you know, my culture, my traditions. Um, you know, there's a lot involved in, you know, in, in self-healing, mm -hmm. you know, and how we look at ourselves, how we treat ourselves and, and uh, what we ingest, you know, food. Yeah, liquor. You know, right. You know, um, you know, we stay away from those things because we have to. Our traditional ceremony doesn't allow us to, to you know, indulge in, in you know, alcohol or drugs. Yeah. So. And if you were to think of somebody who, um, well, is there anybody in your life and in your memory who kind of helped you with in terms of giving you this calling to help and be a leader and and. Well, because you're a leader in so many ways. Yeah, so, yeah. it started with my my great grandfather. His name was Yohoilapton. Yohoilapton. Yeah, and his English name was Tommy Ball, and uh, mm -hmm. he taught me many things. He taught me how to be a farmer, a fisherman, hunter. Mm -hmm. Growing up, I think I shot my first deer when I was seven. When you were seven. Yeah. Wow. And I'm just across the bay. And really. Yeah. I climbed the you know Malahat. We call it Yas, yeah. and yeah, that's where I shot my first deer. And uh, well, but you know, like I said, and then he had his own farm that we had to help with. Mm -hmm. He had everything, you know, that we had to Fruit help with. Fruit and everything. Oh yeah, everything. animals, cows, right. horses, chickens, mm -hmm. yeah, pigs. Is that near where you live right now? Uh, it's exactly where I live right really? now. Yeah, where I live, you know, and it's that's where the his house was. It was a huge house, and then and, and that whole area was farm, farm and and uh, fruit trees. Nice. Oh yeah, hmm. and uh, you know, so I, and he contributed to everything that I, I him and, and my grandmother, and my grandmother. Contributed it through your helping them and them teaching Oh yeah, because you know, he told me like, you know, way back when, if he didn't tell me then, he, he told me, you know, yeah, what the, he wanted to talk to, we need to mosh, it's cool, yeah, cha. He in that talk, he was shaved, uh, squinting, wheel mm -hmm. walk, that, yeah. Learn the white man's education, much as you can, then come back and help your own people. And then that's what I did. You certainly do that. Yeah, yeah and, uh, that. and, you know, I, I, because of the teachings, you know, you, you always have respect, you know, for your elders and what they say to you. And, 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 and I, yeah, I did spend time away from home, you know, because I was in a restaurant and hotel management. In in this area or somewhere else? Well, you know, up island. Up island. Yeah, and all, sure. over lower, all over the lower mainland. Yeah. And then, you know, one day the elders came calling. Mm. They just said, it's time for you to come home. Mm. And I was only in my early 20s. So when they, they said, you know, it's time for you to come home, I, I listened. And uh, I think I was 20, probably 24, 25 at the time. And I've been working for my people ever since, mm -hmm. in many capacities. Yeah. 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 And as a counselor for uh, Sartlip uh, for numerous terms, and as we were talking about just uh, before, mm -hmm. and Sartlip has uh, a lot that it manages, right? Oh, um, yeah. It's grown. Over the years, it's right. really grown. You've got uh, for many people don't know that uh, health is a is a I think uh, a focus for many First Nations of education. And, <coughs> I mean, you 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 wear a hat on is it uh, with regards to education? And I'm the co-chair for the Santa School Board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that that's a uh, another meeting and another. Mm -hmm. 
discussions about plans, etc., for the school? Oh yeah, yeah, and then and I'm lucky though they only meet like uh, okay. you know, once a month. Right. So, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that's good. Yeah. We have an awesome staff there that does good work. Right on. Yeah. yeah. How many students are at this school? Oh, roughly I this year, a hundred between or? two and three hundred. Yeah. 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 That's just uh, the you know the elementary and high school, mm -hmm. but I think there's uh, more than that. Counting the adults, there's an adult center there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think there's um, you know there's a lot of discussion about efforts towards reconciliation, federal government, provincial government. Uh, there's also, I believe, room for that at a local level, and uh, building relationships between our communities. Oh yeah, um, and, 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 and there's good things going on here in, in British Columbia, you know, since we've, uh, you know, taken over, you know, health mm -hmm. services from Health Canada, mm -hmm. and British Columbia is the only province that has done that. British Columbia That's First right. Nations are the only province in Canada that is managing its own uh, health services. Is that another, um, aside from the Red Cross, but do you, do you get involved with that? I'm, I represent the Coast Salish on the First Nations Health Council. Okay. And it's it's uh, uh, policy development, advocacy, governance. Right. Yeah. So is that the, um, the health authority or the health? Well, no, the, the, the health council. The health council. Which oversees yeah. the, uh, and works with the First Nations Health Authority. Okay. Which has their own board of directors and staff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And to some degree, I, I think um, it, just in terms of the statistics, we repeatedly hear that there's there's quite a difference with um, health um, uh, among First Nations and the community at large. And so there's a crisis for some for some communities, right? In many areas. In many areas. Many of areas. You know, just to. You know, just to mention one area is, you know, is suicides. Mm -hmm. You know, they're high, mm -hmm. and, you know, and as compared to the, you know, general population, you know, the health of, of uh, First Nations or Aboriginal people is, you know, the percentages, the gap is huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's, uh, but, you know, we're addressing it. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, the rest of Canada is watching us. Yeah, how we manage this. I think that would be a question that many people would have: is what's the solution? What's the answer to mm -hmm. this? Um, what's your thought on that? It's well, you know, I think we're doing it. You know, and it, it's yeah. self-government. Yeah. You know, and rather than dealing with a middleman, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, that was the case, you know, uh, um, Ottawa, you know, would, would would release funds. Mm -hmm. You know, in the past, it would go to you know to Health Canada. Throughout Canada, through the province, and then down to us, right. you know. And then, of course, you know the the percentage of uh, what would get down to programs and services was very small. Right. By the time it made it down to that, yeah. one, uh, it community. went through a, you know a bureaucracy. And yeah. Then, you know, Everybody gets paid something and takes some uh, some of that. Mm -hmm. and, and it's only been three years for us now, and we're still in the planning stage, but you know we we are moving forward. You know. And there is transformation going on. Before it was transition from Health Canada to First Nations in the province. Mm -hmm. Now there's a transformation going on. And, you know, so we're growing. Mm -hmm. But we're making sure that, uh, you know, there's not a, a, a hierarchical method that, that was used, you know, with Health Canada, you know, where they were top heavy. Oh, you know, yeah. So this case, matter of fact, we just presented a budget uh, at uh, this week's uh, Vancouver Island Health Caucus. Okay. There are five regions in the province, and Vancouver Island is one. Okay. And uh, the, the uh, First Nations Health Authority Board of Directors presented their hour budget, and uh, they, sh they showed, like the members, that the majority of the funds that are, that are released go to programs and services, mm -hmm. not to the administration. Wow, that's good. Oh, now, yeah. I know, um, uh, we've covered off a few of the, the hats that you wear. I don't know if there were any that I missed. I think you're, uh, uh, you mentioned a father, but also a, a grandfather. I uh, am. Yeah, you got a and big family, know, healthy yeah. family. To me, that's, that's first mm -hmm. in my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I always told all of my children at nine, you know, that family comes first, doesn't matter what, you know, what happens, no that's matter nice. what. 
family comes first, and then, you know, I have, uh, like I said, nine children, 43 grandchildren. Wow. And seven great-grandchildren. Fantastic. Wow. Oh, yeah. Huge. Big family I'm reunions really, when they're all over. Yeah. I am lucky. I'm fortunate. Well, you are lucky. That oh, way. Yeah. yeah. You should see our house I have on holidays <laughs> and birthdays. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah, it yeah, is. It wants. is. It's awesome. It's just the wife and I at home right now. Yeah. But uh, She's well, I hope. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good. You know, yeah, unusual getting old stuff, but, okay. you know. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's really a, an honor to have you on the show, and, uh, you know, I've always appreciated your wisdom and willingness to share, and uh, so um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you.